Let's go ahead and get started real quick with something. Ten cool video fonts. So let's just kind of rack through those real quick. There are a few different things and a couple of points maybe we'll make along the way in terms of using fonts with video. So here are just some of the ones that I like to use. I mean, I literally have hundreds of fonts, but these are kind of some that'll get you in the game, get you going and they're particularly useful in video kinds of content or cinematic kinds of content. So the first one is called Babus New and it's just a good solid font. It's nice and clean. It's easily read. It can be used for titles and for text. One of the things you'll run into in some kinds of fonts is that this is a capitals only font. So there is no lower case that goes with this font. So like I say, it makes it good for titles and things or anytime you want just some good solid readability. Okay, and don't worry about the links and stuff here. I have a little document that I'll give you that is essentially this presentation in PDF form. Babus New is one that I use a lot. You'll find it used pervasively in lots of different templates and situations. So it's a good one. Chunk 5 is one that is nice and thick but it also has a little bit of character to it. Most of the time whenever a font has little divots or wings or things here those are called serifs. Sometimes when they're really thick like this they're called slabs. So this is a slab font that again just has a nice big bold kind of feel but it's not quite as plain and boring as some of the other title kinds of fonts. Okay, so Chunk 5, I kind of like that one. This is kind of a uptown metro feel kind of a thing. Uh, it's called Daniel and it also looks uh, fairly good in caps but it's really just for like simple titles or things like that. I wouldn't necessarily use it for you know all kinds of text things like that but it can lend a specific kind of feel and when we're picking fonts of course that's kind of what we're looking for is the variety of fonts and the different kinds of emotions that they can help us convey visually in our video work. Along those lines one of my favorites is called the Bada Boom font and I, I use this one quite a bit whenever I want it to feel a little more whimsical or satirical. A cartoonish kind of a thing would be a good example of this. In fact, some of the assets that I'm creating are cartoons with Batman looking pow or bam or, you know, something like that. And uh, this kind of font comes in really handy. A lot of times I will kind of tilt it a little bit and I'll plaster it like way across the screen and, and just make it really super big and bold. It's quite impactful. So this is one that I kind of like to use a lot. Once in a while it's good to have a good old grunge font in your toolbox and this one is called Bad Grunge. It's a good all-purpose kind of a thing, almost somewhat similar to maybe a stencil kind of a font, but if you use this in in nice big fashion and maybe mix colors and stuff with backgrounds, it really kind of comes out kind of interesting sometimes. So again, a particular feel and look that you're shooting for, Bad Grunge could be your guy. This one's called Eraser and it is a text font that I use a lot if I have like a chalkboard background. If you set this to like an off-white color on a chalkboard textured background you can do kind of uh, whiteboardish or chalkboardish I guess kinds of things. Boleto Kila is, I, I don't know, I almost liken it to some kind of a European kind of a feel. Uh, so it's an interesting cursive kind of text and again it's it's big, it's bold. I use it for titles when the mood is appropriate. Oswald is just a good solid sans serif font and it's it's big. I put two examples here, one with 
lowercase and one in uppercase. It also comes in, and a lot of these fonts do actually, it comes in a variety of different flavors being uh, light, bold, italic, semi-bold. You know, some of these fonts you can get in seven, eight kinds of mixtures or variations that make it really easy to stick with a standard kind of a font but still get a whole bunch of different looks and feels to it. I probably should have put some more examples on there. Fira, F-I-R-A, is another good example of such a thing. Couture is a font that I use when I want a nice, clean, I'll call it almost kind of round, and notice the O here. It's a nice big circle. Most fonts, the O as an example, and even see the C here, are kind of oblong instead of just straight circular in nature. And all the other lines are nice and smooth and clean and rounded. So couture is uh, an interesting one to also have. And go bold. Go Bold comes in a bunch of those different flavors. It's a good title font, big, easy to read, things like that. And for the most part, when you're just, you know, if you have a text box or something like that, I generally stick with pretty readable fonts, even just Arial, or if I want something lighter, the Calibri, the standard Windows kinds of fonts. It's not hard to find a font in just the Windows package the default fonts for text boxes. Uh, but a lot of times what I'm looking for is, is a more impactful kind of a thing. And so some of these bigger title kinds of fonts are generally what I might go for. And then I think this is the last one, finally, Neon Lights. Now I'm going to be doing a separate tutorial on this particular guy and actually a couple variations of Neon. Uh, our buddies over at Levideo have a little toolkit. They have figured out some ways to kind of light these up uh, so that it looks like neon and it's kind of cool. So we'll do some more on that uh, at a future point. And that's uh, pretty much it for some of the top fonts that I use. Uh, this one, I'm not quite sure where I got it. It's called, you see, some fonts are just kind of weird decorated 035 BT. I like it, but I couldn't really just readily find it out there. And like I say, on my machine here, I have literally hundreds and hundreds of fonts. So, yeah, I'm, I'm almost thinking of going in and kind of cleaning some of these up. Over the years, what you'll find is that You'll find fonts and you go, oh, that's cool. I think I want that. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you've got just like hundreds and hundreds of them, which in my opinion is kind of a good thing and sometimes a bad thing because too many choices by and large sometimes will do more to screw you up than anything else. So yeah, like I say, there's, there's all kinds of interesting fonts. Let's, uh, you know what, let's just uh, preview a couple here. And when I'm choosing fonts, by the way, sometimes I'll, you'll just put in a text, you know, whatever text you want. You know, we'll just go down here for, for now. So if you highlight this, and then you, on your home tab, uh, you can just hover over fonts and preview them. So, yeah, I'll tell you, a lot of times, that's kind of how I might pick a certain font or a certain look. And it works kind of the same way in Camtasia, uh, although you don't necessarily get this real-time preview. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll, you know, just fire up PowerPoint, put in a big old text box so I can see it. And sometimes, you know, you move it over to this side because, and you can preview them here too, but I don't like to do that because you don't really get a good view of it. See here to the left. But if you have your text box over on the right here and then on the home tab go to your stuff up here, then I can really just kind of flip through 
and get a really, really good idea of what it's going to look like. So that's just a couple things on fonts. Sweet. Any questions? Is there a computer performance impact with a large number of fonts installed? Asked Dick. Um, not really. Windows only calls fonts, or the application only calls the fonts that it it has within its the container format. So other than that, it's really just kind of disk space, uh, pretty much as far as I know. Mike asks, when you update your version of PowerPoint, do those fonts you added stay with the new version? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, because fonts are installed in Windows and the application and then Windows makes those fonts available to the applications through the Windows APIs so yeah I'm pretty sure they should should all kinda stay there and be there now PowerPoint as an example and I'll just take a short aside here it used to when you uh, had a font installed it used to, off to the left-hand side here, where my mouse is, it used to say either like TT or OTF, and those are kinds of fonts, true type and open, open fonts. And if you saw that TT, as an example, the little icon to the left of the font here, you knew you had the font installed. Well, with the new versions of PowerPoint, I have no idea. Uh, if I open up a template or something like that, if I actually have the font. And there's kind of a convoluted trick to figure that out, and I'm not going to get into that right now, but just be aware that um, if you open something up, it will show the font in your list, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have it installed. It's kind of screwed up, <laughs> in my humble opinion. So they work in Word too, as Mike. Yep, yep. All they're once you install them into Windows, they're system fonts. So that should be the case. Cool. All right. Uh, if there are no other questions, I will let everybody go. Have a good evening, and we'll see you next time.